Killers fire breathing out the clock and is screaming, bitch, go and see him. Now you're grieving at the door. Of- What's going on, Juggalos? This is Juggalotus with Fagolovers.net. On the phone today with Psychopathic Records artist Boondocks. What's up, man? What's going on, man? How you doing today? Chilling, dude. It's great to talk to you, man. We've been wanting to get you on the interview you know, circuit with us for quite a while. It's it's time that oh, our no schedule's doubt. worked out. So, it's, dude, it's great to have you here. Um, we are looking at you heading out on the Back from the Dead tour with Valais, your dead homie. How did that tour come to be, man? I know, you know, Magic Ninja Entertainment and Psychopathic, still homies, still down with each other. But uh, how did you guys hook up, man? And what can we expect uh, when you go out? Oh, um, pretty much. I'm, you know, pretty good friends with uh, George, the main guy over at uh, Magic Ninja Records, their mm-hmm. guy. And uh, he hit me up and asked me if I wanted to go out with Blaze. And I was like, hell yeah, me and Blaze. We haven't been uh, doing much here lately, but back in the day, we did a lot of stuff together. And, like, I, I lived with him for a while when I first came to Psychopathic Records. And he was the first tour I ever went out on uh, with Psychopathic Records. And so... When George hit me up and uh, told me about it, I was like, oh, yeah, and uh, that's pretty much how it came about. All right, cool. Um, I know when Blaze usually goes out, he throws together a like tour EP, usually with the guy he's touring with. Is that something we can expect from you guys, or any uh, surprises was, like it that? Was, it was discussed, but for some reason, I don't know like what happened, but it didn't go down. So, no, I mean, I don't know if he's got anything himself. But as far as me and him together or me having anything, no, nothing like that. Okay. And, you know, the last one that you put out uh, as far as albums was uh, Abaddon. It was yep. one of your best, I have to say. I, I was lucky enough to review that for the site, and, you know, I did really enjoy what you did on there. Is that kind oh, of I the. I appreciate it. Yeah, is that kind of the avenue that, you know, you see yourself going in the future and in the material you're working on, or are we going to see more of a turn back towards the original boondocks, more of that country, you know, jugs and banjos and, you know, is where are, where are we going to see you go next musically? Um, well, I don't know. I, I don't really know how to answer that question because it's like, I don't really have a plan on like sound and what my record is going to sound like. So I'm like actually sit down and start, you know, getting everything ready and getting my ideas going in my head. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of doing that now because I want to start working on something new, but as far as like what it's going to sound like in the future, I don't really know. Like I said, um, it just, it's just how I feel that day. I mean, <laughs> that's pretty much how it rolls. I mean, I, I'm just, I'm one of those people that I live day by day. You know, I live second to second. I don't like really do too much planning ahead. I mean, that kind of sucks in a way. But, I mean, that's just how I am, and that's just how I've always been. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, just depending on how the day, how I feel the day that, you know, everything starts coming together, that's pretty much what it's going to be like. I mean, I don't know how else to describe it. For sure. I mean, yeah, most uh, artists, you know, kind of get in the zone when they get in the recording. And, you know, I, I wasn't sure if you worked that way or if you had a plan going in. I know, you know, different artists go into the studio with a different – you know, mindset. Some work with beats first. Some work with lyrics I, first. I, I wish, I wish I could plan stuff out like that. I wish I was a <laughs> plan maker, but that's just not me. I just like I said, I live second to second. I don't ever know what's going down. That's cool, man. So I, I know you looked yesterday. I put out on Twitter and Facebook for any fans to send me any kind of questions that they might have for you. Um, I got quite a few questions that came in on the email and a couple on Twitter. Um, so I'm gonna hit a few of those right now. Um, All right. One of the first questions that popped in, and it was almost immediately as I posted it and I saw you share it out, was what's up with Turncoat Dirty? I know you were working on that before. (laughs) You kind of came back to Psychopathic, and we haven't heard anything since you came back. So That's a question I get asked a lot. And the thing, like, I want to do Turncoat Dirty so bad. Like, I want to make that record, and I've, I've recorded stuff for it. Mm-hmm. But it just seems like whenever I start getting into it, something bad happens. <laughs> so, I, and that's like not a lie. That's like a complete honest truth. I mean, anytime I've ever started working on that project, 
something like bad happened. Not not with the music, not with doing the music, but just like in personal stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like I'll uh, you know get working on it, start recording a few things, and then bam, some kind of like tragedy or some kind of crazy shit happens. So I don't know. I mean, up until this point, it, it just seems like a uh what's the word I'm looking for? Like a doomed project, like some kind of, yeah, doomed project, something that every time I work, try to work on it, it just goes to shit. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, I know. That but I mean, right. I want, it's one, it's one thing that I really want to do like really bad. And I don't know, we'll see. Maybe, maybe the time's just not right or something. I don't know. That's cool. Yeah, I know. I, I've been kind of looking forward to it. And when you had stepped back from psychopathic and you know i was paying attention on twitter you're like working on dirty and i was like oh crap we're gonna get something and then it never came out and i was like man what the hell but then you know of course being a fail lovers we kind of keep up with you and i know you had some personal issues you were going through and you know that kind of pulled you away from music for a while and, and you know it was really good to see you come back so if it's a doing oh, project definitely. please don't do anything man we need you in the music scene we don't need you like disappearing <laughs> on us or something like <laughs> oh no doubt no doubt the other uh, question that came in, I'd say within 10 minutes, was any future writers or writers news that you might have for uh, Young Dirt and the writers? Um, No, because I don't know what's going on with the writers. Like, I haven't heard anything about it. Like, we did, well, they did the uh, the set at the gathering uh, last year. And oh, my daughter's in the background. Sorry about that. <laughs> but yeah, they did the. Uh, that at the gathering last year and you know i wasn't involved in it you know that nobody asked me to be involved in it so i mean i don't know what the deal is with riders and i don't know what the plan is i haven't heard anything from anybody on the subject so yeah i don't i don't ha i don't have a clue but if they came to you and said doc's getting the studio young dirt needs to throw down a verse you'd definitely be down to do it um yeah i mean just yeah Pretty much. I mean, it would depend on, like, what the project was. I mean, of course, it would be a writer's project, but just depending on, like, what they wanted to do with it, I mean, I'd be down to do it. Cool, cool. Well, that's good news for the fans. I know that uh, you were definitely a welcome addition to that uh, click, so. Oh, it was fun to do. I, I like doing it. Yeah, I think uh, when you guys rolled through Denver a, a few years back and you weren't on stage with them, and it, it was kind of disappointing i was looking forward to it but any uh plans coming up i know the gathering is going down at the end of july um yeah are you going to be on the main stage at this year and what can we expect if you are um i'm hoping i'm on the main stage this year i mean if everything goes as planned i will be as far as what you, what to expect um i really haven't put too much thought in it i've been doing i just came off tour with the uh, abk and then Right when I got off tour with him, I got this uh, call from George to do the Blaze tour. So, I mean, I really haven't put too much thought into it. That's something I'm going to be working on, like, out on the road with Blaze is getting some ideas and stuff. But I do plan on doing some something big this year because usually I just get up there with a banner and or something, you know, just do my thing. But right. I think this year I need to do something a little bit special. I don't know exactly what it's going to be. Sorry, I don't have any info on that. But I do plan on doing something special. Awesome, awesome. Uh, what's next, man? I got so many emails. <laughs> it wasn't even funny. Um, we have you and Blaze going out. And one of the few, a few questions that came in that was a little obscure, but I wanted to hit on it a little bit, was – is it a little weird going out with Magic Ninja Entertainment being a psychopathic artist? I know you're homies with them and you've been homies for a long time, but I, you know, of course, speculation runs rampant in the family and people are, oh, there's beef between the two, and we all know that's not true. But is it a little bit weird to kind of hop over and do a tour that's not with psychopathic? I know you've been doing tours with them for as long as we can remember. Nah, I mean, to be honest with you, I don't even think about that stuff. I mean, to me, it's just homies. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't have anything to do with politics or anything. I try to, I try to stay away from politics as much as possible. And uh, so I don't, yeah, I don't even really think about that stuff. So it's not weird at all. It's just like going out on the road with any other, you know, act that's a homie of mine, and that's pretty much what it is. Cool, cool. Now I know yesterday or the day before, Blaze and you had both put out. This is the final list of dates on this tour. Is that? list concrete or is there flexibility where a show might pop up 
uh, on an off day, let's say. I know you got an in-store in Arizona, but there's no show in Arizona. And I know a lot of um, fans here were kind of like, what the hell? I'm going to I'm going to I'm going <laughs> to say it's flexible because just when I got right before I got on the phone with you, um, I was uh, emailed a date for Arizona. So now there is an Arizona date after the uh, in-store. Is it the same date as the in-store? I think it is. I'm not sure. Like I said, I just got it right before I got on the phone with you and tweeted it out. I didn't really look at it too much, but I know there is an Arizona date. Awesome. Like, so I'm, I'm going to say it's flexible. <laughs> awesome, dude. Like, that is great news. I know we had some Phoenix homies, and I'm down here in Tucson. And I was like, oh, nice. an in-store, but not a show. I was like, what the hell? So when you roll through, I'm definitely coming to talk to you. <laughs> um, All right, cool. Now, when Abaddon came out, a lot of people... It was kind of polarizing in the family. I know there were people that really, really felt it and dug it, and there were people that were like, oh, this isn't like Seven. You know, this isn't like the boondocks I know. Is that kind of the vibe you got off of fans, and what kind of feedback did you get from the fan base? I mean, it's been – overall, it's been really good. I mean, yeah, there are those people who – our diehard Boondocks fans as far as the music that I do that is more like the old stuff. But, I mean, I guess you're going to get that with anybody. I mean, like, if anybody, like, falls in love with a certain sound and you switch it up too much, I mean, they're not going to, you know, dig it as much. But, I mean, overall, it's been, like I said, it's been very well received. I mean, I don't, to me personally, I don't think that I am a person who, like, has a set sound. Like, I think that I just do whatever, I mean, whatever sounds good to me, and I don't think I really have a set sound. I mean, there is kind of, when I do the, you know, that country stuff with, like, the banjos and everything, mm -hmm. but I mean, I, to me, like I, like I said, I just don't think I have a set sound, but, I mean, that's just me personally, I don't know, but, like, yeah, it's, it's been pretty well received. There are those people, like you said, who are, you know, diehard country-sounding boondocks fans with the crazy hillbilly shit and everything right. and i mean i like i like doing that stuff too but i mean like well, yeah i just do what sounds good to me and that's just what i put out right now i remember when you debuted with psychopathic violent J tweeted out i remember he was on tour he rolled through georgia one of the first things he put out was i found something in georgia that's going to blow y'all's minds you're never going to see it coming and then speculation went wild. What do you find? Who do you find? You know, how did you get found? Like, Dre found M. Jay found you. How did that happen, man? How did that meeting, or you know, happen? How did you stumble upon Boondocks down in Covington, Georgia? Like, um, pretty much. I mean, there's two. There's two different stories that are one story, and they're both true. It's just they kind of happened at different times, but um. I was a juggalo before, you know, I'm, I was boondock. So, I mean, I was out at shows giving out records and, you know, giving out, you know, samplers and shit. And uh, I'm, I think that they got a hold of one of those. And uh, at the same time, around the same time, the Underground Psychos contest was come, had come out and I entered that. And uh, they heard me through that as well. So, uh, yeah, those that's kind of the two ways that they heard about me. But at the same time, you know what I'm saying? It was two things, but at the same time happened around the same time. Okay. Now, when that all went down, the initial thing that we heard was, you know, the Bloody Brothers back in the day. I don't know if you were being a juggler. I'm sure you were aware that Jay had talked oh, yeah. about the Bloody Brothers project, and it was hillbilly shit, and we wouldn't expect it. And the speculation came out that's what was coming. Was that ever discussed, or was that something that was just a – legend that you know a myth, a myth that came up in the juggalo universe and has kind of perpetuated through the years um the bloody brothers was something that i of course knew about before anything about boondocks had ever even been thought of or conceived but um actually i'd say a year or two after boondocks was uh you know like 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 after i come on the scene of boondocks and psychopathic records it was discussed with uh me and uh, Violent J to uh, do a Bloody Brothers project, me and him, mm -hmm. but uh, it never came to pass or whatever. I mean, something come up or whatever. You know how it goes. Of course. <laughs> of course. I mean, yeah, you know how it goes. That's all I got to say. I mean, things come up and, you know, yeah. get talked about, but they don't go down. But, yeah, I mean, right. as far as Bloody Brothers, that's 
pretty much the only tie-in I have with that. All right, cool. Um, you're kind of a pioneer, man. Like you brought a sound to the family that I don't think any of us expected. With you know songs like Chicken Hunting and other things, there was a lot of hate towards country, if you will. Yeah. And I don't really classify you as country, but you bring that sound to the family. Were you at all concerned coming over, you know, to this side and doing the hip hop and making, you know, the country hip hop? Because now, I mean, especially in the country scene, you see it blowing up with, you know, the Moonshine Bandits, with, I know you and Tones did Hennessy and Moonshine. You kind of crossed that mm-hmm. over, but you were one of the first people that came out with that sound. Was there any concern at all, especially being a juggalo, coming over and bringing that to the family that it wouldn't be well received? Oh yeah, of course. I was like, yeah, I was up until up until I started getting feedback, you know, from Juggalos on what I was doing. I was scared. Like when I first, like my first show with Psychopathic was the Gathering. <laughs> at that point, I was scared to death. <laughs> right. I didn't know. I didn't know what was gonna happen. I didn't know if I was gonna walk out on stage, you know, and get bombarded by a bunch of. Uh, uh, things that Juggalos like to throw at people sometimes. And shit. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know if I was going to walk out on stage and get bombarded by that. So yeah, I was yeah I was scared to death of how it was going to be received because of all that stuff you talked about. But yeah, I mean, luckily for me, I was accepted by most. There's still people who you know aren't feeling my stuff, and that's cool. I mean, I don't feel everything everybody else does either. I mean, definitely, I've never been one of those. I've never been one of those people who were like mad or upset. Because somebody, you know, said something bad about what I did or wasn't feeling what I did. But, yeah, luckily, most, you know, received it well. So, yeah, I was lucky in that respect. All right. I know being from the South down there, you've done a lot of work with um, Buckshot and his crew down in uh, Kentucky. Yeah. And, and, dude, I can say in the past couple of years, you've made a lot of noise. I'm not sure if you're even aware of how much stuff you've brought to the family one of them being Buckshot, Class, and Boondocks as the Underground yeah. Avengers. Is there plans in the future to have an Underground Avengers album part two? Um, it, It's been talked about and discussed, you know, over the past couple of years. But as far as doing one, I don't see one. I don't see anything happening on my part. I mean, this, they... How can I put this? I'm not going to speak for them on what they they got going on, but as far as me, I don't see it going down on my part anytime soon because there's just so much, so many other things that I want to pursue musically. Okay. And uh, to me, like to me, when I did that, I didn't plan on doing it more than once. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> I just planned on it being like a one-time thing. And then, you know, moving on to something else. So I'm not going to say never because you never can say never about anything. Right. But, uh, on my end, personally, I don't see it happening anytime soon at all. Because, I mean, like I said, there's just too much other stuff that I want to pursue. Man, you just broke a ton of Juggalo's hearts with that answer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. But, I mean, to, to me, creatively, I mean... I just want to branch out and do some other things, you know, work with some other artists. Definitely, definitely. I know, you know, when you first came out, Cletus was your hype man. You toured with him quite a bit. Um, I know in recent times, I, I haven't seen you doing a lot with him, but he brought, you know, on his set, a lot of metal guitars and more of that genre of music. Um, with that, you bring a little bit of that in too. You're a really interesting, unique hybrid of all those things. What was your musical influence growing up? Being from the South, having those country roots, what kind of music did you listen to with your, you know, family, man? Like before you even hopped into the music scene and started rapping, who was Boondocks prior to that? I mean, coming up as a kid, I, of course, I had to listen to anything that my parents played in the car. Definitely. So it was all country music all the time. <laughs> so I mean, just like old school, like you know, country music from the. 70s and 80s that you know they you know come up listening to or whatever so a lot of uh, alabama conway twitty alabama (laughs) yeah charlie daniels uh let's see what else 
Uh, Skinner, probably. I can't even. I can't even think of anything right now. But yeah, just a lot of old school country music and stuff. Okay. And uh, then, like when I started, you know, being able to get my own, you know, got my own record player and my own little uh, Sony Walkman cassette player, I uh, started moving in more to, towards metal. I was super into Iron Maiden, still am. Always been a big Iron Maiden fan. Black Sabbath, um, Sepultura. Uh, Danzig, stuff like that. Okay. And then as I got older, I started, you know, I mean, when I was younger, I did listen to some hip hop, not a lot. I'm not going to sit here and lie and say I was a hip hop head coming up or whatever, because I wasn't, I was super into metal, but I did listen to some of it. But as I got older, I started, you know, veering more towards hip hop and rap and stuff like that. But uh, when I was younger, it was uh, Run DMC, The Fat Boys, LL Cool J, Cool Mo D stuff like that, KRS-One. For sure. And then I started getting into, like, uh, Southern Rap, The Dungeon Family, uh, stuff like that, Goody Mob and Outkast and all that stuff. And Definitely. Now I, now I listen to everything and anything. All right, all right. Modern music, I know a lot of Juggalos hate the mainstream. Um, they look at guys like Tech and they, oh, Tech's sold out, he's going mainstream. <laughs> What's your opinion on guys like Tech Nine, who kind of have grown from the underground, expanded out, and are, are really touching the mainstream now? I mean, he's working with artists that I never thought I'd see him work with. You know, when I first heard of him, uh, what what's your thoughts on on guys from our genre breaking out of that and and becoming more of a mainstream type artist? I mean, if you would have asked me that question ten years ago, I probably would have had. A different answer but now being a, a, a family man and uh, having kids and having to put food on the table I'm not mad at anybody trying to get money you know what I'm saying because life's hard <laughs> and it sucks it sucks to say this but money does rule the world these days oh for sure and there's bills to pay and you know you got you got to put food on the table I mean you can sit back and say that you're mad at people for you know going mainstream and getting money or whatever but I mean you got to do what you got to do to pay the bills. You know what I'm saying? I mean, certain Definitely. people like a certain life, certain people like a certain lifestyle. And I mean, if you like that lifestyle and the underground music isn't provi providing that lifestyle for you and you can, and you can see a path to uh, making more money or doing whatever, getting more fame to provide that lifestyle for yourself and your family, then I mean, do what you got to do. <laughs> for sure. For sure. All right, we're coming up on the end, man. I only do 20 minutes with people, and it seems to fly by. But I want to get some quick questions, um, maybe one-word one, one word answers, and uh, kind of roll through you know, a few of those and, and see your vibe on those. Um, your favorite mainstream artist right now? Favorite mainstream artist right now? Oh. I don't even know. I don't even know how to answer that. I don't really listen to any new music, really. I mean... <laughs> oh, let me think. Who would be my favorite mainstream artist right now? And it can be any really genre, have. not necessarily just hip hop. I don't even know how to de oh, shit. I don't even know how to describe mainstream music. I don't even know if I answer if, if it would be the right answer or not because I don't know what's <laughs> mainstream and what's underground. I mean, like the sure. the line. But and I'm sorry to go in depth in this because I know you said we didn't have a lot of time. But no, no, you're good. You're the, good. <laughs> the 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 line between underground and mainstream to me personally is so blurred now that it's just like I don't even know what's mainstream and what's not. I mean, I guess the stuff you see on TV and here on the radio is mainstream, but I hear Ray, I hear Ritz on the radio, right? And to me, he's not mainstream. And I see Ritz on the on TV, and to me, he's not mainstream. So I mean, I don't even know how to answer that question. To be honest with you. That that definitely that line has been blurred. I know exactly what you're saying because we see it, you know, definitely with ICP getting on, you know, TV doing their show and you know Ritz hitting it and Tech Nine at the freaking World Series last year. I mean, the lines are so blurred. Yeah, you are absolutely exactly. right. I don't I don't want to offend someone by you know calling them mainstream. You know, if they don't consider themselves mainstream, so I mean, I, like, yeah, I, I'm not even going to answer that question. <laughs> all right, all right. As you've toured around, I'm sure you've gotten plenty of demos, mixtapes. Uh, any artists that we don't know about that we should be uh, looking for on our radar? Um, uh, 
Not really. I mean, anybody that I've listened to, I mean, I've pretty much, you know, given props to or been on, you know, their, their stuff. I mean, Dark Cat, they're, they're dope dudes, and I did some tracks with them. And, I mean, but people know about them. So, uh, as far as, like, new cats that nobody really knows about, not really, no. Okay. Uh, what's next for Boondocks, man, after this tour? What do you got planned? Going back home, taking time off? I know you have a deal with Psychopathic. Is that two more albums with them and then reassessing the situation or, or what's in the foreseeable future this year for Boondocks? Um, a, a new record. I'm going to start working on a new record. Uh, I definitely want to start doing that because that's what I do for a living is make music. And that's what I love. Definitely. Um, as far as like what it's going to be, I don't know as far as how it's going to come out. I don't know. And as far as like what, what's next for me besides the new record, I can't really, tell you because things are changing so fast right now in in music and in the underground and with psychopathic and everything that I mean I don't I don't really know what's going on really I mean that's just kind of one of the things that I'm gonna have to sit down with them and discuss and you know see what comes next but I mean I plan on making a new record and I hope that it can come out on psychopathic records and you know things are kosher there but okay I don't know um, you've toured with a lot of people, and I know you have roots. You said Iron Maiden in the metal scene. If you were to tour with one artist, not necessarily hip hop, who would that be? Um, not necessarily hip hop. Uh, jeez, I would love to go on tour with Iron Maiden, but I wouldn't be very well well received <laughs> right. on an Iron Maiden tour. But I would love to like go on tour with Iron Maiden as like a roadie. Right, <laughs> carry all their bags, something like that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, any any artist that I would, you know, tell you probably wouldn't be well received uh, with uh, the music type of music that I do. I mean, Twisted can get away with that more than I could, but oh yeah, they're very diverse. You know, yeah, they're they're like on a whole nother level with the shit they do. It's crazy, and I'm super proud of those dudes because for you know getting in their own lane and you know just think their new record is super dope. But yeah. Uh, um, I don't. Yeah, I'd love to go on tour with Iron Maiden, but as a roadie, not as an opener. Definitely, that'd be awesome. Um, I got to touch on it because you've been a juggalo as long as I've known you to be in existence here. FBI thoughts, opinions. I know it's kind of beyond and a little bit old news now, but it just got rehashed with ICP reopening the lawsuit. Your thoughts on them labeling us gangbangers? I mean, of course, I think it's bullshit. I mean, every every group of every group of uh, music, or, or every genre of music, and every you know person in that group or group in that group uh, has people that do crazy, stupid shit. I mean, that's just how the world works. And to label one group just because you know they're not accepted in uh, the mainstream culture, to label them as a gang just because they have a couple stupid idiots that do stupid shit. I mean, that's just dumb to me. I mean, like I said, every group, every artist has people that are fans of their shit that do stupid stuff. So it's just dumb. All right, definitely. And that's kind of the perception from our side as well. Last question. You're going out on tour. You're going to be with Blaze. You're doing two in-stores as far as I know, two meet and greets. Um, There's also VIPs on the show. What are you looking forward to most going on the road with Blaze? Just getting to hang out with Blaze again because I haven't done it in so long. It's been like probably three or four years since we've been able to like hang out and kick it. And we used to have a lot of fun when we went out on tour. And like I said, when I stayed over at his crib, when I first got on Psychopathic, and yeah, just getting to hang out with him and then getting, you know, to perform for the Juggalos. Definitely, definitely. And I can't tell you how much we appreciate you taking time out of your day to spend with us and talk to us. Um, like I said, it's it's been way too long. Uh, when you come through Arizona, if there's a date and a concert, I will be there to see you. And I hope everybody in the fan base comes out to check you out because this show should be pretty dope. And you guys definitely deserve as much support as we can give you. Um, keep doing what you're doing, man. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day. Usually I do oh, no twenty minutes. Usually I do twenty minutes with Boondocks. 
today we're damn near 30 minutes with boondocks man and that's something i have never done with an artist so i really appreciate you taking time any final words for the family before we get out of here i just want to say uh thank you for you know giving me the giving me your time and uh thanks to fago lovers for you know doing this interview and you doing this interview and i want to say much love to all the juggalos much love to psychopathic much love to magic ninja uh, much love to everybody out there. I mean, that's 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 where I'm coming from. Boondock has nothing but love for anybody and everybody who has love for me, and uh, that's how that's what it is. Definitely, definitely. This is Juggalotus for Boondocks, man. I really appreciate it. And all you Juggalos, be sure to go check out the Back from the Dead tour of Blaze. Should be dope. There's a couple in stores. Make sure you check it out. And that's it, man. We're done. All right, cool, man. I greatly appreciate it. All right, peace out, brother.